Good morning. It is Saturday, and this is Rise Up in Hope today. And as I've been sitting here, God has been giving me a theme and a title, and it's different because it just causes me to pause for a moment. Today, He is calling this devotional reactions and spiritual blindness reactions and spiritual blindness and I I want to thank you father in advance for leading guiding speaking because you're gonna teach us a few things and this is all you and not me so I thank you in advance for where we're going in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes I get an instruction and I go, ah, oh, oh, oh. And a lot of times, actually. <laughs> I'm not. But God says, yes, you are. So here we go. <laughs> Reactions. We react to just about everything. I mean, we... We have reactions going on all day when we wake up in the morning and it's another rainy day. We have a reaction and it's a good reaction. It's not a good reaction, but we are human beings that react all day long. You come down to do breakfast and, and you react to your family members and one thing that I believe is for sure is that our reactions are a picture of our heart, of what's inside our heart we react off of. And that's why there's a scripture that says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And when we have a guarded heart and we are walking with Jesus and following along with the Holy Spirit we have a heart that's guarded and when we don't we have a fleshly heart and that's a completely different picture and people of the Spirit want to walk in the Spirit and people of the flesh are people of the flesh and there is a big difference we've been studying in John chapter 9 how Jesus healed the man who was born blind and in the study app, it says here at the very beginning, in chapter 9, we see four different reactions to Jesus. Four different reactions to Jesus. The neighbors, once he was healed, revealed surprise and skepticism. The Pharisees showed disbelief and prejudice. The parents believed but kept quiet for fear of excommunication and the healed man showed consistent growing faith so we have four different reactions here and the healed man gets the prize because he showed consistent growing faith so as we begin to study this we get to choose you know what would our reaction be what is our reaction when God shows up and gives incredible miracles because God gives us miracles every day our breath is a miracle and even in that we get to decide and we get to have a reaction how often do we wake up and say, thank you, God, for my breath? I need this breath to live, and you've given me this breath for one more day. Thank you. Or do we have it, do we just pass by the fact that God has given us breath today, and we are so purposeful in where we have to go that it's boom, 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 boom. We we, st we don't even stop to say thank you, God, for the sleep. Thank you, God, for the shelter. You know, the simple things. So we react to that. 
And so here it's saying there's four different reactions here. The neighbors revealed surprise and skepticism. Pharisees immediately come on the scene and show disbelief and prejudice. Parents believed but kept quiet for fear of excommunication. And we as followers can have these reactions. We can show surprise and skepticism when God shows up. We can immediately show unbelief, disbelief, and prejudice. I mean, I'm reminded this morning as I've been sitting here, I just am reminded of times where, you know, people come out of jail. I'm involved in jail ministry, and, and I listen, and I hear disbelief and skepticism, like it won't last. They'll be right back. Give them a week or two. And that's conversation in the body of Christ. And I don't think that pleases the Lord. I think we have to believe. I think that when one person gets set free, we have to join with the angels up in heaven and rejoice in their salvation. And I I know that God wants us to look at what our reactions are today. And then we can react in fear by not saying anything. It says the parents believed but kept quiet for fear of excommunication. They were fearful with selfish motives. I mean, my goodness, their son is seeing. He's been blind his whole life. And yet fear, honestly, has been able to creep in. And it can be the same for us. So we have to be careful. We have to ask God to guard our reactions. I wrote down... Um, a, a prayer this morning Lord guard my reactions if they don't line up with yours and with your character don't let them come through set a guard over me that my reactions if they are not lining up with your character Jesus then keep me silent and Lord don't let me be like parents that are fearful. Don't let me react in fear. Because you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of sound mind. I want to react boldly and triumphantly. If you give someone a miracle, if there's a testimony that comes my way, if I'm hearing that somebody addiction has been broken off of them. Lord, do not let me be the ones that line up with the enemy and believe in his unbelief that it's not for real. I don't want to go there. And I, man, just, just seeing that today makes me go, no, I don't want to be one of those. I want to be the one that says, you got this. It's going to be good. All the days of your life, you're going to serve Jesus now, and you're going to be set free. And those things that bound you yesterday are not going to be in on your clothing. You're not going to wear those anymore. I want to be the one with faith. I want to be the one that cheerleads on. Don't you? How often we, the body of Christ, by our tongue and by our reactions give the enemy full reign to do it again. Oh, we've got to see this. We've got to have spiritual, oh, our eyes have to be spiritually awake. We have to look at where we are spiritually blind. And maybe that's why God says today is reactions and spiritual blindness. We're going to go now and begin to read because yesterday we left off in verse 34 where the Pharisees are accusing this man, and they're mad because he hasn't gone their way. He just is so, they are, so dead set against making him come over to their belief. And so they reply to him in verse 34, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you 
lecture us and they threw him out. They threw him out. Verse 35, Jesus. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out and went. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Verse 38, then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what? Are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. There are so many lessons in verse 35 to, to verse 41. And I just want to share some nuggets that I see and that pump my spirit. In verse 35, it says, Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And we know that Jesus, God, sees and hears everything. And so Jesus had heard they had thrown him out. And what did he do, friends? He went and he found him. Jesus will always find you. And if there's somebody today that needs Jesus to find them, today's the day. Because God is watching and God is seeing and God knows everything. So God instructed Jesus, hey, the Pharisees are on him. They're attacking him again. Can you go? Can you go and rescue him? I, that just, but Jesus is good. Jesus will rescue you. Jesus will be close to you today if your heart is broken. If you're crushed in your spirit, Jesus will come and find you. Because that's his love. That is his love and his mercy and his grace. He extends it to you today. I don't know. For some reason, I'm very emotional right now. And um, maybe somebody's going to hear this today that's in a really hard place in a hard place and I just want you to know that God sees you God sees you and he is for you and Jesus has already started making his way towards you and he will rescue you the, the word of God says that Jesus is close to the broken hearted close to the crushed in spirit there are many circumstances today that give us give us crushed spirits but God sees everything and knows everything and he's coming to get you today and when he finds him he, he asks a question I love that Jesus always asks questions he doesn't he doesn't come with a hammer he comes with a question do you believe in the son of man who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. I mean, just imagine that. You know, and I have to remember, you know, back in 1990 when Jesus met me. <laughs> I mean, he sat down and we just had a conversation. And it was life-changing for me. Verse 38, then, then the man said, Lord, I believe. And in 1990, I said, Jesus, 
Show me who you are. I believe. Show me how to live. Because at that time in my life, I wanted to die. I did. And I said, Jesus, if you'll show me how to live, I'll live. And he did. And I love here in verse 38, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. That blind man took the time to worship him. I don't know what that means. It doesn't explain it. You know, did he fall to his knees and just fall silent before his deliverer, his redeemer, his miracle worker? Or did he lift his hands up and allow tears of his whole life being blind and suddenly he's saying, I just wonder, like, how did he worship him? How do you worship God? Do you worship him when he shows up and shows out? I do. I do. And then in verse 39, Jesus says, For judgment I have come into the world so that the blind will see and that those who see will become blind. See, I, back in my 20s, I thought I knew Jesus. I, I had spiritual blinders on. I, my blinders were so thick that if you came to me and you wanted to talk about Jesus, I wanted to talk about him too. And I was like, yeah, I, I know him. And yet my life was a mess. I was spiraling down. The spirit of death was on me. So I was spiritually blind. And often we think we're seeing, but we're not. And even in this scripture here, the Pharisees thought they had had it right. They had spiritually blinded themselves. So it says here, Jesus says, so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and now they're being offended. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been with somebody that you're tapping into something that's just a little too close to where they are spiritually blind and they get offended and you'll see it in them. The spirit that's on them will rise up. <laughs> been there too. And I know you have. And so they get offended and they ask, what? Are we blind too? Are you telling me I don't believe? And Jesus says, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. Because God has a lot of grace, mercy, compassion for the ones that are, are uh, guilty because they really are blind. But now that you claim that you see, your guilt remains. So Jesus has thoroughly corrected the Pharisees because they are claiming that they see and that what they see is true. And this is so, this is so often the case of even, you know, as we walk with Jesus, we have got to ask him, please keep me spiritually seeing what you're seeing and do not allow me to walk in blindedness. It says here in the study app, the longer this man experienced the new life through Christ, the more confident he became in the one who healed him. The more he walked with him, the more confident. And that's real. You know, when you first start walking with Jesus, you're going to have a lot of questions. You're going to have to... <laughs> A lot of things will have to be overturned in your life, but as the Holy Spirit cleans your life up and, and removes you, you'll see how he works and you'll only desire that because you will see the goodness of God. You will see his true character. You will, you will know God. You will, it will be a different God than you thought you knew. I grew up knowing God, but there were, there was a, big void because I wasn't studying, reading, opening the word of God. I wasn't looking at the Bible. So therefore, that's a huge void because if you 
are calling yourself a follower of Jesus, you have to be reading the Word because the Word is God. And so that was a huge uh, blind spot for me. I thought, yeah, I know him, but if you're not in the Word, then you don't know him. You only know a portion of him. And Jesus died for all of you, not just a portion of you. So here it says, he gained not only physical sight, but also spiritual sight as he recognized Jesus first as a prophet. That was back in verse 17. Then as his Lord, when you turn to Christ, you begin to see him differently. When you turn to Christ, you will begin to see him differently. And this is huge. The longer you walk with him, the better you will understand who he is. And, and I really can give the example of any relationship that you're in, friends. This might help somebody. You know, when, when you meet somebody, you know their name. You might know what they do, but you don't know them until you begin to walk with them. And then you begin to know them better. And you begin to see their character. You begin to know their likes, their dislikes. Their, you get to know them. That's why when we walk with Jesus and we begin to walk with him, the longer we walk with him, the better we'll understand him. If we are married and in a relationship, if you don't give your spouse all of you, believe me, that marriage won't work. It's not supposed to because God has a plan for a man and a woman in marriage. They become one. And it is very, uh, very important that you give yourself completely to your mate. Otherwise, the enemy will have a field day with that. And I guess this is for marriages out there. Are you giving yourself to your spouse? Are you praying uh, for your spouse? Or are you in a place where you need to have a revival? And if that's the case, then understand the more you give of yourself, the better that marriage will be. Peter tells us to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you want to know more about Jesus, keep walking with him. And then also in the study app here, it says the Pharisees were shocked that Jesus thought they were spiritually blind. Jesus countered by saying that it was only blindness, stubbornness, and stupidity. That's what it calls blindness here. That could excuse their behavior. To those who remained open and recognized how sin had truly blinded them from knowing the truth, he gave spiritual understanding and insight. So, to the ones who remain open, I'm talking to us now. If we remain open and recognize sin... And that we could possibly be blinded. We might be having blind spots with what our sin is. You know that scripture that says, take the plank out of your own eye before you judge somebody else. That could be ours today. He gave spiritual understanding and insight. God, holy, through Holy Spirit, we will gain spiritual understanding and insight. But he rejects. This is who God rejects. He rejects rejects those who are who have become complacent self-satisfied and blind God just rejects them he says well until you're humbling yourself before me until you ask me to show you do you have any blinders I'm just going to leave you to your own demise because again when we reject God and his ways the punishment is he's not with us we don't get his blessing. We don't get his instruction. And that's punishment enough. It is punishment enough. And anybody who has uh, things going on in their world right now because they have done, because they, they do have sin in their life, because they are far from God, then your punishment is God's not with you. Because it says God rejects those who have become complacent, self-satisfied, and blind. So today we ask ourselves the question and we ask Holy Spirit to show us. This is the challenge and 
And God is so good because if we're willing to ask the question, he's willing to show up and, and teach and deliver and rescue. And the question is, is there anything that I am spiritually blinded in right now? Oh, Holy Spirit, if there's something that I am spiritually accountable for in my own self that I have blinders on, would you show me? Please open my eyes and open my heart. This is a good question. Is there anything I am spiritually blinded in right now? Please open my heart and open my eyes to see. Holy Spirit will show you. We do not want to be stubborn, complacent, self-satisfied, and blind. We don't want to be there. When we are there, we lose so much. We just forfeit blessings. You know, we put the blessings on a shelf and we are suddenly on Satan's team. I don't want that. I hope this helps somebody today. I, I, um, I pray, God, that whoever's supposed to hear this would come out of darkness and that spiritual blindness would be no more. I pray that you annihilate the spiritual blindness in the body of Christ this morning, God. I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you tomorrow.